Right, I'm coming back, guys. And today we are going to look at uh, flow charts still under the section of numerical methods. That is our pride math. And uh, when we say a flow chart, I want you to look at a computer and then how you command a computer to do a given task. Uh, but before we go into the details of what we expect, let's first look at what a flow chart is. When we say flow, it means that there is something like a systematic procedure you are following uh, to achieve a given task. If we say a flow chart of excellence, it means that you will sit down and you plan wisely how you are going to play your cards right, and then you achieve what you are expected of. Now, when we say a flow chart, we use diagrams to represent the steps which show a plan of some methods of coming out with a, a given computational procedure. So here, we use the grammatic representation to execute a given computational procedures. But basically, when we talk about a flow chart, uh, look at like a computer. A computer is, a da, is like a dull person who must be given instructions. You must give instructions to a computer in order for it to solve the problem you want it to solve. You will not sit with a computer and you tell it that you do one plus one, it won't. You will enter that method, rather you will enter what you want it to do and it will give you the results. So like the way you see the computer, here we are going to look at how a computer works. So we are going to look at how we command machines uh, with the instructions and then these instructions should be put in the language, okay, that can be easily understood or interpreted by the computer or by any machine you are using. Now, we may need maybe, we may need a machine to read some values. After reading some values, maybe it prints something. That's why the computer when you're using a machine is ever asking you questions. Are you sure you want to exit? When you say no, it will take you to somewhere else. When you say yes, it will exit you. Uh -huh. If like those procedures are the very procedures we are going to look at, but here we shall be given iterative formulas. Uh, in our previous video, we looked at how we prove the iterative formulas using the newton rafton method, which we called NRM, okay? So now we want to see if given those formulas and you're told what a computer must read, and you're told what a computer must print, can you be able to perform a dry run? And you come up with, uh, uh, with the results that the computer would have printed. Now, a computer has got sections, which we all know. It has got uh, uh, like ordinality, for you know that uh, ordinality, what we know as a plus, still a computer maintains it as a plus, what we know as a multiplication, a computer uses an hysteric, like a star. Then what we know as a division sign, for it uses it as a slash. And what you know as a power, for you what you put as a power, for it put it as a, as a power of this format. So computer has got different, system, uh, different sections. We have the input section. And the input system, that is where, rather the input section, that's where the data is fed into the computer. And this one can be done by using the characters already in the computer, or you can have a list of data that is called a dummy input. So uh, that is the input section. You are feeding data into the computer. That data must may be there, maybe you are analyzing it well, or you must, or you might feed the dummy data into the computer. Then we've got what you call a memory, whereby here the computer stores the required results from a calculator. Then we've got the arithmetic center where calculations are done. Okay, we've got a control system that gives the instructions step by step. And we've got the output section where the results are printed out. Now, to guide the computer, we give, the, we give what we call statements. So in other words, our computer, works under some guidelines 
which we give in form of statement. So you give a computer a statement of what it should do, okay? Now, uh, the steps that we give a computer are going to be represented by various shapes, okay? Which shapes are geometrical? We shall look at, uh, we are going to see circular or oval figures. We are going to see parallelograms. We are going to see rectangles, okay? And uh, all these shapes are, are connected by flow lines. So we shall see maybe if you tell a computer to start by using a certain shape, another step will be connected to from the first one by using what we call a flow line. So when you say flow line, a flow line is that straight line, okay? Uh, with an arrow to indicate the direction in which the computational procedure is executed. And these flow lines must not cross each other. So uh, I'm going to summarize for you the statements that computers read. Then after giving you the statements, we look at an example of a flow chart, then we go into general examples. The example I'm going to use for the start will be a, a, a real life example of crossing the road. But let's first execute and look at the, 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 the shapes or the figures that we use, okay? So the statements, include the following. The first statement is the start or the stop, or some books say end. Now, um, this one, of course, for the start, it tells the computer to either start and for the stop, it tells the computer to stop the program. So when we say start, that we have commanded the computer to start running. When you say stop, you will have told it to stop the program. And for these statements on your computer are indicated by an oval shape. Or you can, you can do a small circle, okay? So you can put start. And when you say start, because this step is continuous, now we have just started. So it must be connected to another step by using a straight line with, a, with an arrow. That is start. But for the stop, for the stop, it means that already you're coming from up and you are stopping. So for the stop, the moment you move an arrow down, just you know you are done, okay? So that is the first stage. Then we have got, we have got the second stage and this second stage is what we call the read or the read statement. So, when we are putting the read statement, this is where uh, you are told, or you give the dummy values into, you feed the dummy values into the memory of the computer, and the computer will be able to store uh, these values. So we have called it the, the read statement. So let me call it the read statement. The read statement. Uh, some books call it the read stage. Some books call it the infusion stage. Here, you are feeding values, okay, into the memory. And this read stage is represented by a parallelogram. So, because it is not yet the final stage, so, this parallelogram to be reached at, you must be coming from up, you connect to a parallelogram, and then because it must continue, you have trust that you are coming from up and then you are continuing. So this one, we call it the read stage. Maybe they can tell you, you can tell the computer to read maybe values, maybe A or B, or you can tell the computer to read the initial approximation. Then after this stage, we have what we call uh, the assignment box. We have what we call the assignment box. So that is my third stage. The assignment. And this assignment stage, some books call it uh, uh, the arithmetic stage. Some books call it the computation stage. 
And here for the read, some books can call it initialize stage, operation stage, assignment stage, you see? So, uh, no, 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 not assignment, but uh, uh, just read, call it read or infusion or initialization. But for assignment or arithmetic stage or computation stage, that is where the arithmetic computations are carried out. In other words, the assignment stage is represented by a rectangle, and that is why you feed the formula. Okay, you, you feed the what? We feed the formula, so we indicate it by using a rectangle. You need to just note the shapes that we are using. So, this is the assignment stage. And for the case of the assignment stage, uh, you may be told maybe first derive a formula, then which formula you can feed, uh, which formula you can feed here. And uh, it can be maybe like, uh, they can tell you, maybe a formula can be like Xn plus one is equals maybe to, uh, maybe to four over three into Xn plus two. It can be any formula, but it is coming from somewhere and it is still continuing. So that is what we call the assignment box. Then after looking at the assignment box, we go to another box that we call uh, the tolerance or the decision box. Okay. Decision and this decision, some books call it the control. Okay, control stage, control statement. You are controlling the statement. So here, this is a blanching operation that you must carry out from which alternative paths are taken, all right? You can take an alternative path after a suitable decision has been considered based on a control statement, okay? It is represented by a rhombus, but here you're asking yourself, is this, that is where we bring in the error. Okay. It guides the computer to decide which step it should take next, depending on whether a certain condition is satisfied or not. So for the decision box, uh, we use a rhombus. We use a rhombus and uh, and in that decision box, you ask yourself a question. Actually, you don't ask yourself, you ask a computer, or the computer will ask you, or you ask it, all right? It is continuing, but depending. So it is blanching, it has a blanch. So in this, you ask yourself, is it maybe, is maybe A, minus b is a minus b less than zero you're asking yourself less than zero with a question mark okay so uh, there you can have a no the answer can be a no and the answer can be a yes so we shall see if the answer is yes what do we do if the answer is no what do we do? Of course, if the answer is yes, you will print out the results. If answer is no, you will go back and perform more iterations, then you print later. So now, um, for this case of the tolerance, or uh, you can call it decision, control, and you can call it tolerance box. Huh? So for this case, uh, when we say tolerance, tolerance is simply the difference between the present number and the previous one. So it represents the error in the quantity that's being evacuated or evaluated. So uh, the error limit may be given, okay? It may be given or by basing on what you're given, you can find it. So in other words, in most of the cases, all these computations, we normally compute or we normally ask ourselves whether n my xn plus one minus xn, that is the error, all right? is less or equal to the tolerance whereby 
Uh, and that is this one gives us the error limit, what we call the error, the error limit. All right. So now you're asking yourself, is a certain value, is the difference between the original value and the present value less than the error limit, less than the error? We shall look at uh, the details of how we can uh, do this. So now uh basing on this, uh basing on this, we can uh, execute. We can execute. Uh, 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 we can execute some some computations basing on what we are having. Okay? We can execute some values. Now, from here, we go to another stage, uh, which is which is called the print stage. So we go to what you call the print stage, and that is stage number five. That is the print. We have what we call the print stage. Now, at this point of printing, of course, this is the last stage of the flowchart, and it indicates the termination of your computational procedure, or it gives you the result. Okay, actually, not the last stage, but this is where the, we can call it a stage where the output values of a computational procedure are displayed for viewing. Eh? You can display by printing, and uh, this stage is represented by a parallelogram, as we shall see. But as we have said, here you display the results for you display the results for viewing. Okay, so we normally use still a parallelogram and uh, a parallelogram. So we shall have it like this. So you have print. You can be told what print, maybe I can print X, depending. Then after printing, of course, you have to stop the machine. So we have, we have to look at the stop. We have already looked at how we, we indicate stop. You just stop the machine. Okay, so these are the stages. Uh, these are the stages that a computer or a machine has to go through to come up with uh, a computational procedure. So I'm going to show you a real life example of a flow chart. And uh, I'm going to use uh, a point where someone maybe is crossing the river or crossing the road. But since we have all crossed the roads before, crossing the road uh, can be easier for all of us. Now, uh, maybe like a person who is trying to cross a two-way road has a small strip, maybe a, a two-way road that has got uh, a strip of flowers in the middle. Uh, one, of course, will have to begin with the starting. Okay, you will start. And as you start, maybe you one can use capital letters, but because of the gadget I'm using and the pen, small letters are easier for me. Then we maybe you can begin by looking right. You can begin by looking right. Okay, so I will say look right. Okay, now after looking right, you will ask yourself, is the vehicle coming? You're asking yourself, okay. Uh, is any vehicle coming? So the answer should be either yes or no. Uh, if the vehicle is not coming, if the answer is no, if the vehicle is not coming, it means that you can cross the first road. Uh, you can cross the first road. Let me say cross the first road. Uh huh. After crossing the first road, you'll have to look left. Okay, so let me say look left. Okay, now you, of course, after looking left, you ask yourself again is the vehicle coming? However, I will show you the cases where we bring in a no if it is a no. So let's first consider a case 
where the vehicle is not coming. So is vehicle coming? Okay. If no, let me assume that the answer is no. You cross the second road. You cross the second road, and after crossing the second road, you stop. But for the case of this, now let's go back here. What if the vehicle was coming? If the vehicle was coming, if it was a yes, then you can't rush, you have to wait for a minute. I'm assuming, I'm just designing a simpler one. Wait for a minute. Okay, the vehicle is coming, so wait for a minute. After waiting for a minute, you will go back. You go back. You have to go back. Okay. You have to go back and you start from that procedure. You have to go back and you start from that procedure. Here, if the vehicle was coming, if the vehicle was coming, because you crossed the second road because no vehicle was coming, but if the vehicle was coming, here still you would have waited for a minute. After waiting for a minute, then you will go back again, you, you, you look left again, so that you don't get into an accident. So that is what you would do. This is what we call a flow chart in a simple terms. So we are going to do an numerical procedure and a numerical question that involves a flow chart and we see. Uh, the results of the flow chart will be helping us to perform what we call a dry run. And that dry run is the checkup plan for a computer procedure of a computational procedure that yields the output value from an input value in a finite number of steps. So we are going to look at a dry run later on, but let's first look at examples. When you're given iterative formulas, what examples uh, uh, like, how do you perform these procedures? So, um, examples, Examples number one. Uh, let's begin with this. Show that. Show that the Newton Raphson formula. of finding the root of the equation finding the root of the equation 2x cubed plus 5x minus 8 is equals to 0 is 4x cubed n plus 8 over 6x squared n plus 5. That was part A. Part B, taking the first approximation. the root of the above equation as 1.2. Draw a flow diagram, illustrate the use of algorithm
of formula computing and printing the number of iterations under root. Then C, carry out a dry run of the flow chart. and obtain the root of an ELA the root with an ELA less than 0 0.001 these are 12 marks so if the number comes like this in the previous video, we looked at how we can show the Newton Raphson's formula. Okay. And uh, this one now can take us to further steps for, uh, to draw a flow chart. So that's the question they want us to prove or to show that the Newton Raphson formula of finding the root of this equation is this. So let's see the steps we can go through to come up with that. Okay, so uh, part A, we have our f of x, n, as when we say f of x, n, you have to bring in x, n. So for x, n cubed, rather to x, n cubed, plus 5 x, n minus 8. That is our, that is our function. Then the derivative of the function, f prime of x, n is going to be when you differentiate, you get 6 x, n squared, plus five, implying that the root is approximated from xn plus one is equals to xn minus f of xn, everything we divide by f prime of xn, or the derivative. That stands for values of n equals to zero, one, two, and other values. Now, it means that our xn plus one is going to be equal to xn minus i told you the moment you put minus you have to put brackets before you put the function so that is 2xn cubed plus 5xn minus 8 everything is over the derivative which is 6xn squared plus 5. so this one will give us xn we shall take the lcm so 6xn squared plus 5 then you open the brackets there minus 2xn cubed minus 5xn plus 8, everything we shall divide by 6xn squared, okay, then plus a 5. So looking at this, uh, this is going to be, uh, this is going to be as, as 6xn cubed, all right, uh, plus 5xn minus 2xn cubed minus 5xn plus eight everything is over everything is over what uh six x n squared plus a five you can realize that five x n will go with five x n and as a result uh six x n cubed minus two x n cubed will be left with four x n cubed we shall have four x n cubed plus eight out of six x So we had seen that uh, we come up with the, our xn plus one, come up with our xn plus one equal to uh, four xn cubed plus eight, everything divided by six 
x n squared plus five. So that is what we are having as uh, our proof. Okay, that's what we're having as our proof. So let's draw a, a flow chart and we see, okay, that was part B. So part B, they want us to draw a flow chart. Now, uh, to draw a flow chart, we say that uh, we have to begin with a start statement. And here, you are turning your machine to start a given task. Uh, then we have to include um, a step whereby we have not done any iteration and we shall say that the number of iterations is equals to zero. Then we go to a step where we have to read. The read statement, we say that we have to use a parallelogram and we put the value that we are intending to read. So I'm going to say read in my statements, they did not tell me what to read. So in that case, I'm going to read the initial approximation X naught. And then if they tell you to read a certain value, you put what you're told to read. Then that one is followed by a statement box, which we represent using a rectangle. And here, that is where you write the formula. And since you already have proved the formula, so you'll say that Xn plus one is equals to four, x n cubed plus eight out of six, x n squared, then plus five. Then that one is followed by the decision box. Remember in the question, they had given us uh, the error limit. They told us that we'll give an error of less than 0 0.001. So you are still asking yourself, is xn plus one minus xn under magnitude, is it less or equal to, okay? Is it less than or equal to 0 0.001? You're asking yourself, and that one must be followed by a question mark. If yes, if it is yes, okay, then you have to print what you are told to print. We are told to print the root of the equation. So here you come and you say print, you come and you say print the root, which is xn plus one. And after printing, you have to stop. So here you have to include the stop. But if the error is not achieved, okay, if the, if the answer is a no in the decision box, it means that you have to go back and you perform more uh, more iterations, okay? And uh, what we do, we shall increase all the number of iterations we tend to, to, to be added by one. So you will have number of iterations tending to any plus one, you are adding an iteration. And that one would mean, would mean that now the value of Xn is also, uh, you are also tending the value of Xn. So we shall have xn also tending to xn plus one then you come and read a flesh okay you come and read a flesh meaning that you come and start from those steps ah uh, so what i've done here is what we call a flow chart that you should come up with after doing some uh, computation so this is the flow chart that we come up with. I'm going to show you how we perform a dry run. Then maybe by giving you more examples, we can master this concept very, very well. Let's see how we perform a dry run. So when we are performing a dry run, a dry run has got, that was part C, a dry run has got uh, some parts. We have the number of iterations. We have the root at that very iteration then we have the root, the approximation of the root. Then we have xn plus one minus xn under magnitude. And we want to see if it is less or equal to 0 0.01. So that is what we call a, a dry, a dry run. So uh, with this, of course, we begin with the, when the number of iterations are zero, we were given the initial approximation as one point 
1.2. Then to get xn plus one, you're going to substitute in the formula which we've gotten as xn plus one is equals to four x n cubed plus eight. Everything is divided by uh, six xn squared plus a five. So you're substituting the value of x as 1.2 into this value of xn plus one. And this one will give you, uh, so in other words, where x is, you'll be substituting 1.2. I told you that you can as well feed this formula into the calculator and you start solving for the values that you're given currently. But when you substitute 1.2, it means that you'll be having four into 1.2 the power three plus eight over six into 1.2 to the power two plus a five. This one will come up with a value 1.0933. Then you check up for the error, the error mean. You are trying to see whether it is less than this. So when you get xn plus one minus 1.2, you're going to get the value which is negative, but because we take the magnitude, we shall take it as 0 0.1067. That is one. That is the first iteration. That for the second iteration, uh, we shall have our n as one, that is xn. Uh, then uh, for the now for this value, we shall use 1.0933. You substitute. Uh, for the dry run, we may not need, we may not be interested in your working, how you have substituted this, you can put in your calculator and you keep feeding in the table. So when you substitute 1.0933, you're going to come up with 1.0867. And when you take the difference here, you're going to get 0 0.0066, all right? Then still the error is uh, greater than what you're given. So we perform another iteration. And now for this iteration, we shall use our xn as this value of xn plus one, which will be 1.0867. And when you substitute into this formula, you're going to come up with the same value, 1.0867. And uh, when you check the difference here, you're going to get 0, 0.0. So this one now, you can really see that the error is uh, very small for it is less than what you given uh, in the equation. Now, in the question, sometimes they give you the number of decimal places. They give you a maybe to correct your answer in three decimal places. It would mean that the error would be a half times the 10 to the power negative n, whereby n is the number of decimal places, of which if they say like three decimal places, one can say 0. Point it is zeros, then a five. That would be the error in that case, even if one had it computed here. So from the information in the table given, or from this dry run we've performed, we can deduce that the xn plus one value is the root. And therefore, since they want us to, uh, uh, they didn't tell the specific number of decimal places, but we can uh, take it like this. If we are not told the number of decimal places, we normally prefer a four decimal presses. So in this case, we're going to say that the root, you can put and say the root of equation two x cubed plus five x minus eight is equal to 1.0867 uh, collect four decimal presses. So that is how we perform a dry run and that's how we come up with a flow chart. I'm going to add you more examples in our other video. Let's meet.